Welcome to SML Total Access, the official podcast of the Sim Madden League. Now, here are your hosts. Hello and welcome back to SML Total Access. Uh, I'm Primetime Triple Zero, and with me is my two co-hosts, Dan and Matt. What's going on, fellas? Not much. Enjoying a beautiful Sunday day. Yeah, great day. Great day, and SML's back season 48 we're in right now. And we're going to start off topic one here. Uh, Matt, we'll start with you. Last season, I think a lot of people would say, and I think a majority ruled here on Total Access, where they said, hey, look, Faz has the most pressure coming on him going into the season, and he delivered. Who has the most pressure on him this season? You know, I, I don't I... – I think this is a tricky question, but I'm going to answer this because I don't think most of the league has pressure on them because most of the league doesn't have an expectation to perform at a high level. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to go Bomber. Um, you know, he won that first Super Bowl, uh, the very first one of the entire cycle pre-blip. Uh, he beat Dump, um, you know, and, and getting through that AFC was obviously brutal, and, and winning a Super Bowl in the SML is never take it for granted with the competition. But he hasn't really done anything since. Uh, I think the last two seasons he's been bounced in the first round. Even last season he was like nine and seven, uh, or whatever that would equate to ten and seven. Um, and his team is stacked, and it just got better. We're gonna talk about that here in a second. Uh, so uh, he's running. There's, I know he's not one to make excuses, but he's. You're right. If you're a bomber apologist, you're running out of reasons. He's got the team, he's got the talent, and all of the big five have won a title uh, since he last did. So I think the pressure's back on him. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of go big a little bit broader. I'm gonna put it in two categories. I think I think myself, Prime, Faz, and Bomber all have the pressure now because we're running out of seasons left in the cycle, and QP's got two Super Bowls. So I think all four of us need to, you know, who's going to be the next guy to, to match QP and try to make a run at, at top dog for, for the cycle. So uh, I still think all four of us have the pressure. Um, and, you know, it, we're, we're, you know, I'm multiple seasons away, you know, prime's got one Super Bowl, one appearance. So it's, it's really, okay. Who's going to go for the top dog of the cycle, but I'm also going to go to the next tier as far as, Guys that got to make that next jump that they've been knocking on the door, and I'm gonna I'm gonna put Clink, I'm gonna put Bomber, or sorry, I'm gonna put uh, Dom, I'm gonna put Matt, I'm gonna put you in there, I'm gonna put Paulie in there, uh, NYT possibly in there as well too. Like all of you guys are just kind of on the outside looking in, can't get past those big five, or or if you do one game, you can't get the second game. One of you guys, as we saw last year, you know Matt made the the Super Bowl in the in the last season. What do you guys? Uh, you know, uh, some pressure started to mount to take that next step to distinguish yourself from the, the second tier, move into the top tier. Yeah, that's, that's good, Dan. I, I put a lot of pressure on myself to uh, win multiple Sambardis. Even I know we had the blip and I took the Colts, but I still want to win too, at least with this team. Um, <clears throat> Dom, I was going to pick, you know, just because kind of like you alluded to, you know, he beat QP two seasons ago, then he lost to me, then then this past season he he beats me and then he loses to QP, so it's like, okay, naturally, what's the next step, you know? Are, are you going to be able to do it, Matt? Or, I mean, Dom. Um, but I, I really, you know what, I, I got to say Bomber, you know, and, and I've been, people kind of mocked me last season when I said it, that, hey, is this guy in the big five or not? And maybe we'll talk about narratives in a few topics from now. But look, last season, one and done. The season before that, one and done to meets. The season before that, he missed the playoffs. And this is arguably with all those seasons with a top three team, maybe the best team. I mean, NYT's team may be a little bit better. But, I mean, this team's good. And it's, in all those games he's lost in those seasons he's lost, he's probably lost with the better team. Now he just added the Avengers on defense, and, and then he loses week one to two-step. Um, I At some point, I mean, if, if, if this was him, he would make a first and goal topic about this guy. I mean, at some point, he's got to produce, and time's running out for him. I mean, is the expectation for Bomber now to make the AFC Championship game or is it to make the Super Bowl anymore? I think we gotta we got to find what that expectation is because – Previously, it was, hey, this guy's a legit Super Bowl contender. Now I'm not for sure. I still stand by my statement that he's not in the Big Five anymore. But we'll see. And the pressure's on, I think. Uh, moving on to second down, uh, Dan, we'll start with you. Who had the best offseason? 
Yeah, I, I think there's three guys that are that are candidates for it. Uh, obviously, I'm going to put, uh, you know, I think most would agree Bomber's probably the, the top guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, what he did on his defensive line was was uh, was impressive, and and I know it had a rough start, but but I think over the course of the season, when it matters most, that defensive line is going to be good. I'm going to put KJ. I think KJ had a great off season. I think him getting Russell Wilson uh, was a great move for him. That that hopes to eliminate some of the Madden mistakes or the QB, you know, uh, computer mistakes because you know KJ needs to play perfect to win a lot of games. So. I think that was a really good move. I, I, I'll share later about my surprise division winner. But uh, another uh, kind of a wild card, and, and it kind of feels a little cheesy, uh, but Meats, I think Meats had a really good offseason. He he traded away uh, Bosa, and, and he got Donald in the in the dra- in the the free agency draft or uh, bidding. And so he lucked out that, and then he added two uh, first-round picks. So, um, you know, it feels like, oh, yeah, he just, you know, kind of hit the lottery on the Aaron Donald. But – Hey, it worked out, and I think he had a great offseason. Yeah, I think Bomber's the clear winner. I mean, anytime you can give up an offensive lineman for a stud defensive tackle like Ed Oliver, that's a huge move. But you throw Bosa on top of that, who was a monster every time I played Meats. Um, uh, Meats, it's tough for me to give him a, a nod. He got extremely lucky. Um, it was a coin flip. Well, was, he got lucky that Donald was a free agent, as we all did, and then it was a coin flip on who was going to get him. Uh, but uh, my pick was KJ. Uh, I'm, I'm right there with you. Uh, not only did he get Russell Wilson – but he was able to flip a 28-year-old right in to get back into the first round since he traded it to his first pick to Dan. And then he turns around and he flips his QB, uh, D'Angelo Spence, who's kind of now in la-la land because obviously Russ is going to start. He flips that to Fig, gets another first-round pick, uh, picks up Tyler Lockett, who, okay, he's he's in his 30s and he's not the guy he used to be, but he's still 84 overall. I think he's like 93 speed. He, nice little slot guy. Um, he... he piles pat finnegan in that trade which was kind of odd to me uh, maybe i thought maybe get another piece that you could actually use but maybe he thinks hey if rust retires i'll rock the last season with with finnegan uh so hey kj wonder uh, and kj is a great team builder he's not like at, you know he might pick in the top five the top 10 a lot but he doesn't throw those those picks away for nothing he consistently gets value from those picks so kj is my pick outside of <coughs> Yeah, I think Bomber had a good off season. I just trashed him, but I, I still think he, you know, had a good strong off season. Um, I don't know if it was the best because Ed Oliver still. I don't think he's a superstar. Um, still, obviously, a solid player, and he did lose a, a guy who did help pave holes for Nick Chubb. He lost a superstar offensive lineman, but he did get Joey Bosa. Um, <clears throat> really strong off season. I do like meets his off season actually. I. You know, call it luck, dumb luck, whatever you want to call it. The guy flipped Joey Bosa, got a few first-round picks, cleared up the cap space, and then made a big free agent signing. Um, and it worked out. You know, sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. And I, it might be the best, honestly. Um, you know, I think the top three are obvious. It's, it's KJ, it's Meats, and it's Bomber. And, and you could take your pick. I think they did honestly head and shoulders above everybody else the next tier i do like what faz did this off season uh didn't lose any major pieces that i know of and uh added a a, a fast receiver and you know he, he's a solid passer and just having that element to his game and added element i think that's a big deal for faz so i think that was i think that was a good off season for him um moving on third down who will or will there be any surprise division winners this season or maybe the last two seasons? Uh, Matt, what do you think? You know, I guess surprise is all relevant to your people, every individual's expectation. But I'm going to just go common sense here. And, and honestly, my if we had recorded this before week one, I would have said KJ. But I've seen enough. Uh, I, I, I've seen enough. You, I think you only scored seven points on on, uh, on Monty. It, my mom could score 14 on Monty. So I, 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 I'm, out on, I'm out on that one. So uh, I, I'm going to, I'm going to say one, I, I don't want to sit here and say, no, there won't be, cause that's the boring answer. So I'm going to, I'm going to pick one and I'm going to say, Mr. QB stud, he's putting the pieces together. Oh, he, 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 he just was, he just went surgical on meats. He was down early. And if you watch him pass, I mean, meats isn't the best defender this cycle, but I think he's starting to put the pieces together. And I think he's starting to get more invested in this team. Cause he's not, you know, uh, peach. I mean, uh, ZZ, he's not whining about the last owner. Um, he's, he's had a draft. Uh, he, I think he's starting to figure things out. If I have to pick one, I think QB stud might 
because he's got the last place schedule. Uh, Prime's got the first place, which has already hurt him because he's had to play Dan, who QB doesn't have to play. So I think that's your one if you're looking for one. Wow, Matt, man, man, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you props for uh, for going out not only not only go out on, on QB stud and but also the shot at uh, I don't know if that was a shot at Monty or a shot at KJ or or your mom I'm not sure which one <laughs> uh, that was a shot at there but uh, anyhow um, yeah I I think divisions are are pretty set I think you've got you know uh, I think Faz and I might you know keep flip flopping division winners and stuff I think there's a chance um, that Spooky could give NYT a run. Uh, I don't think he can get past NYT. That's part of his problems. But I'm going to go out on a limb again because it's boring to say nobody. I'm going to say the NFC North will have a new one. I'm I'm still on the Finns bandwagon. I think yeah. Finns is going to win the NFC North. That's my my surprise pick. Yeah, Finns is a good player. Um, for me, first of all, that QB stud not happening, Matt. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm just not a QB fan, and I will ref- I will retire if QB stud wins the division. The final two seasons. I will retire from the SML. Record this, post it, whatever. Not happening on my watch. Um, Wait, did you say both seasons or just this season? E- either or. Either the final two seasons. If you if you okay. want to division. I will retire. All right, we'll clip it. We'll clip it. Clip it. Um, I'm going to go with Spooky. Um, and here's why. Last season, he should have won the freaking division. But halfway through, he starts like missing games and like just losing focus. And... And then he lets NYT get back in it. This year, he started off good, 1-0, and and he, he's already beat NYT, 52-40. I mean, he put up almost 60 points on NYT. Uh, his, his schedule, a little tough, I mean, to start, uh, but, but it, it kind of gets softer at the end of the season, I think. Um, he's just got to find a way to upset a few of the tougher guys, and, and I think he's got a shot because NYT also plays, um, you know, the AFC South. And I believe uh, the NFC South as well. So both of these guys are going to have a kind of a lower record than normal. And, and I think Spooky's got a shot if he could stay focused. But we'll see. Um, fourth down. Which SML narrative is the most true or most false? Or if you have both or one or the other, it doesn't matter. Dan, what do you think? Man, we could we could spend almost uh, a whole uh, you know half a cycle talking about these. I mean, that's what makes SML great, right? The narratives. Uh, and sometimes it it uh, gets under your skin and drives you nuts, and then you know give it two days, and then the narrative will flip on something else. But I got I got three of them right now. I got I got two that are are legit, and I got one that's not legit. First one, meets folding chair. Sorry, bud. I saw what you did against uh, QP Stud last game. You know, it's just. It's just gonna follow you around. I, I just don't think you can, you can ever get away from it. I, I think I think it is what it is. The other one is is this whole Matt and Prime bromance type thing. I mean that is one hundred percent legit. I mean if if the if the people listening to this could actually hear what I have to deal with before this show and after the show, <laughs> and, and the way that you two just slobber over each other, I mean it is just insanity. But uh, I think everyone already knows that one's legit. The other one that's not legit is the fact when anytime you see Faz call someone out for coward ball, man, that boy better be looking right in the mirror because he is just as much a coward ball as anyone else in this league. And you watch some of these games that he plays and he throws it to his running backs, to his tight ends. And and he runs that ball just more than anyone else. And so anytime you see Faz trying to call someone out as a coward ball player, it's, it's, it's false because he is just as much a coward ball as anybody else. Wow. Yeah, wow, uh, wow. Uh, yeah that's the, some bold words there. Uh, so uh, <laughs> most the most true narrative, obviously I'm going to be biased here because I either created it or I at least helped create it and I've supported it and I get a lot of heat, but it's the big five. I mean, hey, I say it every time, every time the playoffs roll around and everyone gives me, you know, Dom especially, but people always say, oh, there's the big five is not untouchable, the blah, blah, blah. But every single time we get to the Super Bowl, it's the same mix of five guys that are in the Super Bowl um, and I know Dom beat a couple of them but again he didn't get to the he didn't make the last step and beat the last one so until somebody does it and and I'm not counting season one because there was just QP in the NFC so uh, that that doesn't count but until someone other than the big five makes the Super Bowl I'm sorry it exists uh, plain and simple um, as far as the most false um, it's not really an SML it's not like I don't know if it's a narrative, but I get so tired of this. Oh, EA. Oh, EA screws me, or Madden screwed me, or I, I, 
it happens to every single one of us. Yeah. And the entire season, we all get feel the effects, whether it's whether it may, it may not be in one game, but throughout the season, we all feel it. So we're all bet we're all playing the exact same game. No one is luckier than except for future than anybody else. <laughs> so I, I hate that because again, it takes away from your opponent's win when you just blame the game. Um, and I, I hate that. Uh, I I actually try to be cognizant of that myself because sometimes I can say. Oh, I lost because of EA, and I try not to do that because my opponent beat me. We played the same game. I get breaks in games too, uh, so I don't. I don't like that narrative either. That's a good one, Matt. I, I just made me think of the, the uh, connection with that. The the whole new uh, like coin toss, whether or not you get block sheds or your defensive line plays good or not, like that whole thing. I think is just uh, that drives me nuts too. Like, hey, for some reason your defensive line is going to play good that game, but but it's not decided by a coin flip. Like, come on, like. You know, that that one drives me nuts. Yeah. Um, there's some good ones. And I think, like, uh, Doink tends to say that a lot of narratives aren't true. But a lot of SML narratives in terms of guys, like, like okay, meets folding chair, uh, you know, dump a lot of hot air and never good in the playoffs, kind of folding chair light. Um, I feel like a lot of those are true. Doink, choke artist, true. I, you know, you could go down the list. Um, I was wrong, and I'll say I was wrong, about Faz being flaccid Faz. Like, I tried it last cycle. I tried it again this cycle. It's just Faz is a good player. Um, I do think that he has more potential, and he just doesn't realize that for whatever reason. But he's not like some choke artist player. I, I think he's a good player. So that was just a, a false narrative. Um Another thing, I don't know if this is a narrative really, but I think sometimes people go and chat and they, they, they build their opinions on, on people based off what their, maybe their friend group or click or, or whatever, uh, you know, their <laughs> cult believes. And, the, and then it's almost like that said guy never gets a chance to get a fair shot and, and then people don't like that guy. I don't know if that makes a whole lot of sense, but, but I think sometimes like people will act a little goofy or, you know, maybe not portray themselves too well. And then they're forever screwed in the league. Now, of course you have your Monty's of the world. Who's just, you know, it's Monty. That's just kind of what you get. But, but I think there's other guys who, who probably deserve more fair shakes maybe. Um, and, and I'm going to leave, I'm going to leave, go on. Do you, do you have what some person in mind? Can you give uh, us an example? I've got a few, but but I'm just gonna I'm gonna leave it open and let people maybe you know it'll be like church. I'm I'm not gonna name any names or anything. I'm just gonna make people try to be <laughs> introspective and, and think about it on their own maybe. But uh, All right. I don't know. Um, yeah, that, that's that's probably my that's probably my narratives. Um, let's let's move on to the extra point, and I believe we have the Matt Five. Yeah, so uh, I've had this one written down for a little while. Uh, I was bored one day, and I got to thinking about the most disappointing seasons from season 47. Um, and so at number five, I've got the Primer Posse. I, I, I mean, I didn't want to fill three spots with each of them. I, I, Monty, I don't know what's going on with that guy. I don't know if he has a home anymore, but, you know, <laughs> Bede's got Henry and Hill, but, I mean, he, I know he can't beat Prime. Here. He can't beat Prime. Let's go. Yeah. I know he says, "Oh, I gosh, I get prime again." Well, stop getting the seven seed. I, yeah. I know, I know he got the two seed, and I think he played you. But that different. I know that was a different story. But hey, man, if you got if you got the five seed, uh, which you can do with that team, uh, you had have played Woods. So uh, you know that's that. Monty, geez, play defense, and honestly, I think you, I think you could. I think you could be the next Dom if you could play some defense. Yeah. Um, you've got Freight Train as well. You've got an even better team than uh, than Bean. And then Doink. I mean, we, we see flashes of Doink where he looks like he's invincible, and I've fallen for that train. And then there's times where he just he just collapses, and I had him beating Clink, and he just fell flat on his face. Uh, at number four, I've got Grams. Um, you know, I know Grams like you guys do. Uh, I don't know about you, Dan, but Prime especially – just a great Madden player, great user, uh, playoff guy, double digit wins. Uh, I know he was away and I know he's not totally invested. He's busy being rich and he, but winning one game. I do think though, trading Dak, getting this rookie 95 speed quarterback and having the draft he did, I think Graham's might get a little more invested. I and I think we're going to see Graham's in the playoffs this season. Uh, at number three, I've got NYT. Um, I'm sorry, but you have the best team in the in the game. Uh, it's between you and Bomber, but Kyler Murray 
has the best running ability and escape artist. He has the best throwing ability and gunslinger. You have freight train now on a 93 speed running back. You've got Hopkins. You've got more. You've got all this speed on <laughs> offense. You, I mean, I could go all day about this team and how, I mean, it is basically a Madden ultimate team. If you were piecing together that offense, at least that's what you would want. Uh, and he barely won an NFC East that it, or West. That is not good. I mean, I'm probably gonna eat my words cause I play them, but I mean, Gouda just got flooded by Prime. Uh, you know, Field is hit or miss. He's throwing the ball well, but struggles on defense. Spooky's kind of the same way. Uh, so I, it's kind of Super Bowl or bust for me on NYT. He's got to make a run. Uh, at number two, I've got Bomber. Uh, hey, man, speaking of really good teams, he's right there in the con- in the conversation, but he's also a really good player, and the expectations are really high. Yeah. And I know he lost to Dom. There's no shame in that, but he lost to Meats the season before. I, it just... I was disappointed. I thought he would bounce back, have more to say about that loss. Maybe kind of, if he made a deep playoff run, we could say, oh, that was a fluke against Meats. But now you've got Prime saying he's not in the big five. And I mean, uh, it's hard to argue that. Uh, at number one, and this may be the shocker, this is my most disappointing season from season 47. And that's uh, that's Mr. Uh, Coach Pauly. Um, I, I don't know, man. I, I've been waiting for Pauly to get over the hump since last cycle uh, when, he, when he had the Dolphins. Um, you know, great player, great regular seasons, hops into the postseason and just kind of fizzles out. And I remember uh, when he played Faz in the playoffs, I think it was first season of the post blip. He came in and he said, oh, I, it's just too hard, Ev- evasive. That's just the great equalizer. I couldn't stop it. I, if, if I only I had something like that. Well, he does. Uh, <laughs> he actually has evasive. Um and he has speed all on that team. Offense, defense, he's got speed everywhere. Uh, that's a really good team for some reason. And he's not getting it done. And this whole I don't study the game thing, I, th- I think most of us didn't believe that. But he's got an offline franchise with the Giants. I don't have an offline franchise with the Jaguars. I didn't even know that was a thing. So couple his team he's got evasive with this guy does study look how he plays defense uh he kind of invented the rpo uh playbook before i think it became a thing uh Pauly studies he's got the team he's got the roster uh i expect a little bit more from Pauly, and like nyt i want to see at least a, i want to see one super bowl i gotta see it yeah that's an interesting list um you know i i would have the primer posse was a good ad, I think, because you know I think they're they're good to lop in together. Obviously, Doink guaranteed a playoff win. Um, still disappointed in him, not only uh, last season, but this, even this season where he he just won't get a quarterback. Like he just I don't know what he's doing. Like he just will not get a quarterback. And and obviously, I think Bomber and NYT goes without saying. The Poly one was an interesting one. I agree. Um, that's another guy who I like to see maybe step, you know, make a move for Russell Wilson and maybe he did or make a move for somebody like that. Yeah. I, I would just add an honorable mention. I think disappointment has to be prime in myself for yeah. not seeing each other in the Super Bowl. I think, I think we've let the league down multiple years. And yep. one of these seasons, I think we, we both of us got to, got to hold up our end of the deal and, and show up on a Super Bowl. Yeah. So I would have added ourselves. I will say this, uh, this, playoff loss to D Muse. It, it really f- frustrated me more than any playoff loss has in a while. Cause I, I was, I was kind of looking forward to beating him and I, I, I think I liked my chances against QP, but Hey, maybe, maybe this season, I don't know, but, um, well, it, it's probably the one of the only playoff games I've seen you play in the, whatever seasons I've been here where I felt like you actually lost it. Like, yeah, you know, Tom played fine and good, but I, I think if you look at that game, you lost the game and, and you don't say that very much about your playoff game. So so I think that was the most shocking thing. Yeah, yeah, it definitely hurts. But, hey, you know, the good thing is we, we, we play multiple seasons. We got two left, and, and we, can, we can set up that date, and everybody can write their own story. Um, and obviously these guys who had disappointing seasons, they can, they can take the pen and write the next chapter and make it something special. You never know. Um, guys, do you guys have anything else to say uh, for this week's episode of Total Access? Now uh, ready, ready to get rolling and and uh, get this season moving. So luck to everybody out there. Hope everybody's having fun. Uh, that's the main purpose of this league. So, uh, 
<laughs> Best of luck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's all about having fun, uh, guys. Uh, everybody, thanks. It's only for... fun when it's only fun when you win. <laughs> yes, yes. So, well, guys, I appreciate you listening. And uh, obviously, that was Matt and Dan. I'm Prime. And until next time, that's total access. See you guys around.